coming. Hello, Roger. Hello, Dr. Braintree. Hello. Come I'm in. So sorry I'm late. That's quite all right. Yes. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Would you like to sit down or would you prefer to lie? Um, I'll sit. Thanks. Right. Well, sit right Please. down. Now, tell me, how are you in yourself? Well, I'm, I'm really feeling rather in the pink. Oh, this is terrific. Yes. <laughs> it's funny, really. You know, if anybody had told me that talking to psychiatrists would have uh, helped me at all, I'd have laughed in their faces, you yes. know. But I can honestly say that our little chats together have have really been a tremendous benefit to me. Well, I'm so glad, Roger. Of course, a lot of people are instinctively very suspicious of psychiatry, and possibly, you know, with reason, but it can help in times. Well, I, I really think it can, because, uh, you know, I've got so much more self-confidence now. Yes, yes, I'm, yes, I'm, yes. I'm much less self-conscious in, in the company of the opposite sex, which uh, I wasn't, as you know. You're less weeks. inhibited, are oh, you? I should say. Oh, um, this uh, is terrific. <laughs> The wonderful thing is, really, about it all, uh, well, um, I'm in love. Well, this is wonderful news, Roger. You're in love with a woman? Yes. Oh, so much, <laughs> so much the better. That's terrific. You know, it's so wonderful to be in love. I can't tell you the, the absolute joy I have. Well, in... love is a wonderful thing. I've been there myself. It's a wonderful <laughs> thing. I mean, she's, this girl, this, this creature, this goddess, yes. she's so... You know, it's so right. Everything yes, is so yes, wonderful. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. You, know. you really, you really click together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it's it's so marvellous. But the only trouble is that, um, apart from this wonderful, light-hearted love that I have, I, yes, yes. I seem to be saddled with this tremendous, burning sense of guilt. You have guilt as well as love. Well, this is this is um, this is unfortunate, Roger. You know. Sex is the most natural, healthy thing in the world. There's no reason at all to have any guilt about it. I mean, why would you have guilt about sex? It's a lovely, beautiful thing, Roger. Well, it's, it's not really as simple as that. You know, it's, um, it's rather difficult to explain. Um, I, I don't really know where to start. Well, begin at the beginning. That's always the best place. Uh, what's the girl's name? Stephanie. Stephanie, that's a lovely name, isn't it? Well. My wife's name, in fact, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's Stephanie. Yes, it's Stephanie. No, it's Stephanie. Yes, it's Stephanie, Roger. <laughs> yes, it's, it's Stephanie. It's your wife. Oh, you're Stephanie. in love with my wife, Stephanie. Yes. Well, this is a perfectly understandable thing, Roger. <laughs> She's a very attractive woman. I married her myself. I don't see why you should feel upset about that. But she's in love with me. Well, this again is perfectly understandable, Roger. I mean, you're a perfectly attractive human being, as I've told you over the last few weeks. There's nothing repulsive about you, is there? There's no reason why a highly sexed woman such as Stephanie shouldn't fall in love with you. And I must explain to you, Roger, that I'm a very busy man. I have many, many patients to see. I see rather less of my wife, perhaps, than I should. And I think it's very understandable that she should seek some sort of companionship outside the marriage. I don't think that's unreasonable but at she's all. But not, she's not seeking anything outside marriage, Dr Braintree, and nor am I. We want to get married. Well, this again, I think, is perfectly, <laughs> perfectly understandable. After all, you're two young people in love. You want to manifest your love feelings within the confines of a bourgeois society through marriage. I think this is very appropriate. The awful thing is, you see, I should feel so grateful to you for what you've done for me, and, and all I can feel is this... This burning jealousy. I can't bear the thought of you touching her. Well, of course you can't. I can understand it. One is uh, tremendously possessive about someone one loves. One is tremendously possessive. It would be unhealthy not to have this jealousy reaction, Roger. But don't you see, I... I hate you for of it. Of course you I hate, hate you me, for being Roger. So near her. Yes, of course you hate me, Roger. You love to hate the one who loves the one you hate to love to love. <laughs> yes. This is a very old rule, Roger. There's nothing to feel ashamed about. It's absolutely reasonable. Don't you understand? I'm, I want to kill you. Of course you want to kill me, because by killing me, Roger, you eradicate the one you hate. This is a perfectly natural reaction, Roger. You're so reasonable, aren't you? Yes, I am. You understand it all so yes, much. You're yes, so logical. Yes, I am. It's my I'm going job, to have Roger. to kill you now. Uh, Roger, this is a little inconvenient because I have another patient at 6.30 and then there's somebody else at 7 after that. I wonder if you could make it sometime next week. Could you make it early in the week, sir? When? When do you think? How are you fixed on, How are you fixed on Wednesday morning, say, at 9.30? Would that be convenient? Uh, 
Yes, that's perfect. Right, well, um, if you could pop along at 9.30 and kill me then. <laughs> Once again, Dr Braintree, I'm, I'm amazed, you know, really. I'm so grateful to you for, you know, showing me the way. It's what I'm here for, Roger. Thank you so much. Thank you. And with a bit of luck, this should be the last time you need to visit me. <laughs>